that totals and weights of plastic show Sri Lankan ship disasters deep ramifications. CNN, for almost two weeks, a thick black smudge stained the sky off Sri Lanka's western coast, smoke from a burning container ship nine nautical miles out, out to sea. The Singapore flagged express pole caught fire on May 20 and route to, to Colombo, carrying 350 metric tons of oil in each tanks and at least 81 containers of dangerous goods including nitric acid, a highly toxic chemical used to make fertilizers. As the Sri Lanka Navy and Coast Guard, Guard teams fought to douse the flames, the imperial toll through the ship's cargo releasing a cocktail of hazardous chemicals into the air and sea, prompting authorities to issue a toxic rain alert and compo compounding fears of an oil spill. The fire released 80 tons of plastic pellet raw materials used to make a plastic product into the ocean, blanketing, blanketing beaches along Sri Lanka's western coast. The environmental impact was immediately clear. Plastic pellet became lodged in fishes gills and mouths, and dozens of rare sea turtles washed up on Sri Lanka's beaches, some with what appears to, to be scorched marks on their shells. Fishes, dolphins, and even whales were found dead. As of late June, all, about 200 carcasses had been counted. Plastic waste from the ship was found in fish, in fish folded from the sea around Sri Lanka. The two months on, billions of plastic particles have washed over nearly every shore of the island and are expected to dis disperse throughout the Indian Ocean. Fishing communities have been heavily infected and the locals fear it will be take years for the Iceland to recover from what environmentalists have called the worst disaster in Sri Lanka's history, animal death. Sri Lanka is a tourist hotspot, each unspoiled beaches and turquoise waters not only affect tourists, they are home to abundant sea life, including 28 species of marine mammals such as blue whales and 5 species of endangered nesting turtles. This is not unusual for marine animal animals to wash ashore at this time of year, after becoming untangled in fishing nets or simply victims of the rough monsoon seas. While no records were kept of how many dead animals washed ashore in previous years, in local environmentalists say this time is different. We were seeing this exponential increase of marine deaths, including dolphins, turtles. What is not noticeable is an exponential increase started soon after this accident, said Don. Mudita Katuwala, coordinator for Sri Lankan Marine Conservation Group, Paul Protectors. We are seeing 30 to 40 cases reported daily. Chu Shan Kapur Singh, a total conservationist with 28 years experience who helped establish Sri Lanka's first marine turtle sanctuary, believes the deaths are caused by the ship disaster. 
wildlife officers carry away the carcass of the toddler that are washed ashore at the beach of Angulana, south of Sri Lanka's capital Colombo on June 24th. Usually, if a toddler was caught in a net or lost seas, Kapuru Singhe said you'd see cut marks on their fins or broken shells. Often, they were blotted from weeks in the water or have white marks from the other predators, he said. But the toddlers he has seen on the beaches and in the portals seen to sent to him from resident had apparent scorch marks on their shells, swollen eyes and salt grain glands and red engorged blood vessels and legions around their mouth and bellies, he said. What you can see with most of these toddlers found along the beaches in recent weeks, particularly after the express port disaster, there were there are fresh spe specimens he said, now when we see newly dead carcasses, they are clear bone marks on top of the shell. Around the mouth you can see red patches and bleeding. That means internally they are bleeding. He said this suggests that they may have been exposed to chemicals or injury in the fire. The express pole caught fire on May 20 and burnt for 13 days before sinking. Sri Lanka is home to leatherback totters, green totters, lower has hawk bill and the small olive ridley totter. Kapur Singhe, Kapur Singhe, the conservationist, said most of the totters are washing up all the latter later among the world's smallest sea turtles. From images he's seen, most are juveniles, which spend their days feeding in the shallower waters close to western coast, he said. While nesting sites are found all over the coast, turtle migration and nesting route, he said, start at the southern coast and make their way northern up Sri Lanka's western coast between March and July. The carcasses were found on beaches around the capital Colombo, up the western shoreline where the ship was. This is not normal. When you observe them, you can, you can say they did not die because of becoming tangled in fishing net, he said. Several prominent marine biologists have warned against jumping to conclusions about the animal deaths and urged the communities to wait for necrosepsis examination of the carcasses to be completed, though it is unclear what, when that will be. Other factors could be at play in the deaths, including reporter Bias. When people are more likely to not carcasses when they are acu acutely aware of the disaster. Ultimately, no one can be sure what is causing the death, says Katuwawala of Pearl Protectors, and the lack of comparable data is adding to the confusion. We don't have a proper baseline data that we can compare to previous years because of the lack of it and uh, delays in the post-mortems. There is a lot of confusion as to understanding why these marine deaths are happening, he said. All this need is to be accounted for and tested as to how they died and what really caused the disaster for them. Plastic disaster. While necrosepsis are being carried out, while Sri Lankans are still collecting tons of plastic pellets or released during the fire. 
In the weeks after the fire, the surf whipped up by monsoon seas became thick with these white plastic pellets, also known as nodules. The volume was so great that in some areas they washed up in knee deep piles, with each wave bringing millions more ashore. When Asha Debos, a marine biologist and founder of Sri Lankan NGO Ocean Well, saw a plastic pollution inundate, inundate the shores, shores near her home, she started calling experts to figure out what was going to happen next. Lockdown prevented residents from going to the beaches to help out with the re response, but they could assist in other ways, he said. I could feel people's frustration, they both said. Her team set up a nodal tracker so the community could send a photograph and what the beaches looked like before the after the plastic. The result exceeded expectations. We got around 120 people sending photographs within a few days of the entire coastline, she said. The chemical granules used to manufacture plastic washed ashore from the express pole. The next step was to figure out where the nodules were going to the cr create models to track their distribution around the island. People who sent in images of beaches where they spotted the plastic with dates and times. Together, they were quickly able to build a picture of how far and wide the plastic were traveling and plan to tr conduct monthly surveys on the concentration of plastic in certain areas and how it changes over time. One thing stood out. Among the white pellets, they noticed some pieces had burned and fused in the fire, something they hadn't seen in previous similar disasters and could increase the danger to marine environment from potential toxins. If they can't try to understand the de degradation of these nodules, what's going to happen to them? Scientifically, then we have a sense of, okay, how long is this impact going to last? How long can we protect, predict, predict this impact are going to be? They both said. The problem is they just don't know how much plastic was released into the water and how much remained on the ship. It's still very patchy and it's still hard for us to really have a lot of those answers, she said. The country's Marine Environmental Protection Authority said in June it had removed 1,000 tons of debris along 200 kilometers, 124 miles of the coastlines a trumpet, yet the incremental portion of the total spillage. Lessons from Durban. Experts warned the palace will wash out for years to come and become a permanent part of the current and tides of the world's oceans. In the similar disaster in South Africa in 2018, 49 tons of plastic nodules spilled into the sea around Durban. A year after spill, pallets were found more than 4,000 4, kilometers, 2,485 miles away on State Helena Island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and two years later on shore of Western Australia, more than 80 kilometers, 8,000 kilometers, 4,970 miles away. Christina Petalach, a uh, ocean ocean geography professor with the University of Western Australia, said the pellets were the main pollutant from the ship disaster, as any of the other chemicals, even if they fell into the ocean, would have diluted very quickly. 
the plastic, he said, the wild, not necessary toxic will remain in the ocean for years. The nodules will continue to be present in the surface waters of the Indian Ocean for many decades and will make landfall in many of the Indian Ocean countries, for example in Indonesia, India, Maldives, and Somalia, because of the resolving monsoon current in the region, Patelach said. Using high-resolution modeling, his team have been available have been able to plot the course of the nodal's journey over the past two months. The projection of the nodal spread following express pole disaster Patialachi said over time the nodules will gr grind down to become microplastics and plastic from the Durban incident is still found on the beaches of Western Australia. If, it go, if you go to the beach, you will find them if you will look for them. When that's what, ha what will happen to these ones. It will be distributed along the most of the Indian Ocean, northern Indian Ocean countries. If you go looking for them, you will find them for years to come. While the pellets are not necessarily toxic to humans, Patialach said that they can further infect marine life by getting trapped in gills and fish gills of fish causing them to suffocate. Fisher fisheries devastated. Sri Lanka's fisheries were also deeply affected. In some areas they were closed, worsening the financial losses from communities already suffering from pandemic lockdowns. Fear and confusion spread over whether the fish were safe to eat. We also heard about what was in the ship and the chemicals, so we are scared. So now for weeks we have not consumed any seafood. The fishermen were saying it's safe. But there is no guarantee, said Sarika Dinali, the resident from Negombo Beach. D.S. Fernando, a fisherman, also in Negombo, said now the situation is even worse. People are now scared of eating fish because it might be contaminated. Prices have also dropped dramatically. The stranger is hopeless, he said. The workers process salted fish in Negombo, where plastic law materials and other debris washed ashore. Others have urged the government to speed up testing of samples and be clear with the public. We are most affected because people are refrained from buying fish. It is it's the government's responsibility to do proper tests and educate the public on what's going on. Otherwise, the people are afraid to consume fish, said the local fishing community leader Aruna Losantha. The Sri Lanka government, Department of Fisheries, and the MEPA have not responded to CNN's request for comment. On July 11, the state fisheries minister Kanchana Wikesekera said RS 420 million. $2.1 million in compensation will be paid to fishermen as part of the interim claim from the Express Pool. On July 12, the Express feeders said they made an initial payment through the vessel owner's P&I insurers of $2.6 million to the Sri Lankan government to help compensate those affected by the consequences of the fire and sinking of the vessel. Investigation ongoing. 
as communities ways for answers, government and environmental investigators are determining the extent of the disaster. Independent and international oil experts are on site trying to ensure any oil remaining on the hot half sunk sunken ship does not spill into the environment, causing further disaster. They, we continue to con contribute to the cleanup and pollution mitigation effort, having flown in additional oil spill response assets on a chartered, chartered flight from Singapore in response to the request from the UN EU team in Colombo, the ship's operators said in a statement. The locals said the residents were confused about which seafood was safe to eat. Sarvors remained at the wreck site on a 24-hour watch to deal with any debris and report any form of the spill with the drones deployed daily to help with the monitoring activities, he said. Investigations into what caused the fire are ongoing, but the boat had one the the boat had one container of nitric acid, a highly toxic chemical used to make fertilizers that was leaking. The captain of the ship, the Vitali Chukalo, was arrested on June 14 and later released on bail, according to police spokesperson Deputy Inpe Inspector Ajit Rohana. He had been accused for allegedly violating the country's Marine Environment Pollution Act, but hasn't been formally charged. The government has named another 14 people as co-accused in cases over the damage caused, according to Reuters. Meanwhile, the Center for Environmental Justice has filed on fundamental rights petition in the Sri Lankan Supreme Court. For decades, Davos has been pushing for greater rules on ships that pass by Sri Lanka's water as part of her work to protect non-migratory blue whales. The southern coast of Sri Lanka is the main artery through the Indian Ocean and one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world. Pushing, pushing such lanes far farther out to sea or shift to cleaner fuel could help to avoid further disasters, Devosif said, and help safeguard the future of endangered tur turtles too. The shipping, sh the shipping lanes were put in place at a time when we didn't have this wealth of knowledge knowledge about species and how they use these areas or about safety concerns, said the boss. Now and now we do have to use the best available information to try to understand how we can coexist in a way that will make sure that we are doing a better job and looking after oceans. For the boss, community involvement is, is key to recovering from the disaster. We come from we come from a small island where fishing is what you use what you use the ocean for. We come from a small island where the fishing is what we what we use the ocean for. Recreational conservation wasn't a big theme traditionally and so to shift that, we need to give more people have the opportunity to engage. I want to make sure the public is also well informed and not misinformed, she said, and that that is something that can happen in the crisis situation, she said.